my experience with Bob Andy is like my entire life, my entire journey. He was one of the most interesting person that I've ever met. He was so well-spoken, he was very intelligent, knew how to express himself, and he did it well in his music. Bob was a highly intelligent man. He was very cerebral, extremely cerebral. One of the most fascinating minds, I think, that I've ever met. You know, when he conversed with him and his level, his, his, the complex thoughts that he had about the world, and that's why he put it in his music. So we might hear the hits, but in terms of when you delve into like a deeper investigation of Bob Andy and you see his lyrics, you sometimes have to say that it's genius quality in terms of how he's able to just translate the human experience and put it into song, you know? When I used to listen to this man's music, I wonder if he's, he's a Jamaican really I write them kind of things there, you know, where you just touch everybody. Melody and, and, uh, and lyrics just come together like magic. And, uh, you know, I was always saying this brother I speak to everybody like it's a personal thing. Like when you hear music, you feel you get connected on a personal level, you know? I always tell Bob that Maybe the way how he really loved Beris as he must have met him up in another life as another disciple that was sent from God to do the work that they both are doing. I would have met Bob Andy for the first time at Harry J Studio. I had known a lot about Bob before because I had known of his tremendous achievement with his, he had one of the earliest international hit records out of Jamaica, which was Young Gifted and Black with Master Ubis. What struck me was how intelligent he was and how much about the music he knew. And um, even at a very young age, because I was very young when I met him, I would maybe have been 14, 15. And so meeting someone who was, I won't say much older, but was an older man to me, he was almost like a, you know, he was a figure that, he was an impressive figure. He was someone who made an impression on you, you know. And um, he, as I say, he was, his songwriting was quite incredible. I had known about that from that time. I met Bob Andy, Keith Anderson, really, at the time, 1963, at a rehearsal that Paragons were, you know, in Rockfort. I don't think, I know it was ordained because at the time, a young girl, vulnerable, and these are all male-dominated. This is a male-dominated business with musicians and artists. So he was just there. He came in as a, God sent him, you know, because we developed a relationship, personal relationship. So everybody had to stand far, and he was a very jealous person. So we started working together. I managed to know how all these songs were created because we were, you know, like young people, you know, in love. And he's writing all these love songs, Melody Life, Truly. So I discovered that this man was really talented because even at the time while he was writing these songs, he was himself in the studio making hit songs, lots of hit songs, you know. And uh, we continue our journey by going to Harry J studio. And it's a blessing that's where we're, I'm sitting right now. Where out of this studio came Young, Gifted and Black. And, uh, you know, another door was open to us worldwide. We traveled to London, we did Top of the Pops, and toured extensively in England and Europe. So we had a beautiful relationship on a professional level and a personal level. In my younger days, like teenager, Bob was within the said, you know, age group. You know, we spent a lot of time at Studio One. But um, really knowing Bob was the last 
three years that has passed, you know, recently. You know, um, he and um, Alan Skilkole and myself, you know, we, we got together and um, we used to meet at Bob Marley Beach like five o'clock in the morning mm. and we would walk that beach like about a mile and a half a beach. So that's when I really get to really know Bob, even though I, we, we, you know, grew up almost together through the Studio One family settings, you know, and um, really interesting person, really interesting individual. I first met him um, in my teens, you know, at this said studio, R.J. Recording Studio, that was my first. Yeah, he was recording, yeah, Ian Marcia, yes. And I was a receptionist. <laughs> uh, Kitty had an avid sense of humor, right? And an intellect that fed his creativity man, enabling him to write songs and tell stories like no one else, you know? When my mom was starting her, her career, you know, that's the studio that she worked out of. It was her, her Marcia Griffiths and Bob Andy that worked out of Harry J at the time. So, you know, I know the history, he knows the history. So obviously there would have been a, a mutual respect there. Just chilling at his apartment, you know, chilling at his spot, reasoning about, about life, about journey, about health, about, about things like that. You know what I mean? Me and him reasoning over, over. You know, you know, me smoking, you know, him, you know, doing him, him little oil that he does, you know, <laughs> just our vibes, man. He, he was a, he's a great man and I'm a great inspiration and I'm just happy to even speak about him. Our friendship went through different stages. He's an elder to me. So initially it was like, you know, it's Bob Andy and, you know, I'm the young singer. So definitely was like you know, fangirl kind of thing, you know, that kind of respect that you grow up in Jamaica to have with four elders. But then as I grew older, our friendship evolved into a very honest, a very respectful kind of um, was it association. Um, in the last days, we, we, had a very, we had a beautiful friendship. I met Bob at, at Studio One. Uh, all of us were young in the business. Um, but I find out that he, he, he was a nice man. He, 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 no jealousy. Um, speak what he feel, what he felt at least. <laughs> and um, he, he, he was not a hypocrite. And I love that about him. He might have one little something I love about him more than everything. The brother, him just love the joke. So every time he see him, that's all I want from him, you know. I know I ask if he not so well, but we can joke. <laughs> that's all I want from him, man. And him never shot at making me feel good, you know. No matter how grave the situation is, it can't be too bad that this man don't find it humorous and you end up laughing, no matter how serious it is, this man find a humor in it. After knowing someone for almost your entire life, there are so many moments, but everybody knows that I'm not a person who loves to fly. Leroy fly with me and him know the experience. And I was flying with Bob one day and I usually say to myself every time the food is being served, that's when the flight gets bumpy. And we are on this flight, both of us sitting together, and it's really bumpy, but the food was served. And I can't eat when the flight is bumping, not even when it's food I eat. And I see Bob and they just there eating and, you know, not a problem. And I say, how oh, you can be eating in a situation like this where the flight, you know, boy, I want to make sure I go down, I go down that full belly. <laughs> And you know, that was just one of the moments I said, I look at him different because it never mattered to him. You know what I mean? This was a rough flight going over Cuba. I never forget that flight. I met Bob through sounds, actually. 
as well as a lot of the artists that I work with after, is through King Sounds I met him. He respected me as a musician and vice versa. Well, I respected him, I was a fan. And you know, one day he told me, funny enough, was it probably last year or the year before? He said to me, what endeared me to him was that, because Bob, some people would say was very finicky, very particular, right? And if he didn't like it, he would tell you. If it was music wasn't playing right, he would tell you. And he said something, he told me that what endeared me to him was that one day he heard me say, but, but if the man wants it like that, what's the problem, right? Because I was defending him. I said, well, because I'm as a musician that you're back in artists, your job is really to support them. It's not about you. We never actually got together in the studio to like do some works, but him sitting in a couple of my sessions in the studio and run off a mouth sometime, you know, like, you know, uh, me, probably I sing one little line and myself, uh, uh, in that time, if you sing that line about, in my utter some little words, and I say, yeah, <laughs> which is a nice, nice way to do it, you know. I remember that he wrote one of my best songs, one of my biggest songs. I'm going to tell you goodbye, babe, but I don't want to see you cry, babe. I'm leaving you behind, but it's just for a time. And that song release and don't know. Oh. Anywhere I travel over this world, I have to sing that song. Yeah, it but was not easy person to really tame. Uh, no, you, you know? can't tame him. He yeah, had his so. own will and his, yeah, you know, man. do him own thing. Yes, that's why I said the politician, I'm afraid of him. Yes. Oh gosh, those never lyrics afraid. cut like sword. Yeah, I'm never afraid to speak in mind, you know. And maybe a little bit of them kind of treat them too. You know? The little? Well, maybe a little bit more than little. This brother, I know, I rate him amongst the greatest. Period. When it comes to making songs and making people believe. Young, Gifted and Black, it was a great experience as a young man growing up in this country. You feel your chest puff up and you feel tall. He enlightened many of us, he had a consciousness. His songs had a high degree of consciousness as, as a lot of reggae music does actually, especially coming through the cultural side as, as Rasta and everything. There were songs that were known, more known here than in Jamaica. He had songs like, um, You Don't Know, and um, Life, and feel the feeling. Those songs, he he himself said it, that those songs are more known in England than in Jamaica. You don't know how you make your teachers feel to write the things you know, discuss the things you've learned. The more you give to life, is the more you're gonna get from life. Go on and give, don't count the cost. We would sit down there and we would eat a lot of roast fish and stuff. And we were together, so we had to be chatting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, and it was a joy. Actually, the morning that Bob died, right? The morning. It was, I think it passed somewhere around after seven and so, you know, somewhere around there in the morning. And a dove flew into my yard on the, on the, um, on the grass. And I've never seen a bird operated the way it did. The dove flew in and sat on the lawn and then he, he, he lifted up, went on the wall and sat there a little bit and then he took off. You know, and I, me, myself, you know, figure that it's a spiritual farewell, you know what I'm saying? So you say farewell. Yes, man. That's it. CF travel, you know? Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, my brother. He's well missed by me and by the entire music fraternity.
in Jamaica. And um, he has left a wealth of work behind that, um, you know, he has left a body of work behind and, and um, we, we, we treasure it. You know, just sending love and respect to Marcia and for her contribution to the music industry as well is just profound. And I know we all miss him very, very much. And um, we hope we can continue and preserve his legacy. He made such contribution to the music as a songwriter, someone who had a vision of the people and the struggle and everything. It was everything that he expressed in his music was things that relate to mankind and the present situation of what was going on for everyone. And it was all messages to teach and to edu educate and uplift mankind. You know, he was a prolific songwriter. And I see him as a gem, a cornerstone for this, you know, music. And the contribution Bob and the Maid, wow. I don't think words can express it. But his music and his legacy will live on just like a Bob Marley. You know, him is responsible to lift, to lift up, um, responsible for lifting the level of, of songwriting to me, you know, in my opinion. And I guess as you can see, the, the amount of reggae artists and Jamaican artists that have covered his songs and have renditions, you know, that's the, that, that says enough. And he's, you know, that's a, a big part in, in the global movement of reggae music. His contribution was enormous. But his contribution to the development of this music is very awesome. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't lift him out of this. His name will be here forever and his songs. Generation after generation will come and hear Bob and his song, probably not by him, but by other entertainers, singers and players of instruments. You know, so, um, but I love him. Give thanks. Give thanks. So, yeah, <laughs> his personal favorite, yeah? It wasn't as popular as the others, but it was his personal favorite. If we all could live together, find a way to love each other, give thanks, give thanks for the changes in the seasons and the rhythms and the reasons, oh, give thanks, give thanks, yeah. Yeah, Katie Anderson, a.k.a. Babandi. Peace out, be blessed. For those who yeah, weren't I able to that. be here to sure. really express how they feel, mm -hmm. we know that his friends and his brethren, you know, we endorse everyone. True, man. We still send in love to everyone who yeah, loved man. him, knew him and loved him and appreciate his work. I would love to dedicate this song to Bob Andy, one of the songs he wrote for me that I recorded at Studio One. A beautiful love song that says, Truly, we love you truly. Truly, we love you truly. And it would mean so much to me if you could understand that I need you just to be my lover, man. I say, Truly, we love you truly. Truly, we love you truly. We love you truly forever.